So in this video, what I want to do is show you how to create an effect like this, which is called data moshing, where we basically take out all the uh, important video data, all the keyframes, and just work with the motion data of that video, creating these really weird and interesting effects. So this is, uh, and I'm gonna let it play to have doves fly out of her body here. Uh, this is based on this uh, original video from Britney Spears called Circus. Uh, I just took the first 30 seconds of that. Um, and what I'm going to do is show you how to do that through the terminal. And basically I'm going to follow this tutorial. If you never use that through the terminal, it might be interesting as well. So the application that we're going to use is already installed in our Mac and it's called Terminal. You can look that up if you use Spotlight. You can just type Terminal and get that application there. Uh, and it's going to bring up a shell or something that looks like this. Uh, it might look a bit different, it might just have your full name here, this one's a bit customized, uh, but it's basically being the same thing. Now, there's a couple of things we need to install to be able to data mosh, and the first one is Homebrew. That's this application at brew.sh, I'll also link it in the comments. And then you can do here, you can click uh, copy, paste that line in, press enter, and then let it do its thing uh, after you type your password. I've already installed this, so I'm going to hit Control c to, con to cancel but that's what you want to install. Note that the shell is sort of like a dialog that you have for your computer. So it, you type a command like um, echo hello, and the computer gives you back a command like hello, or you type ls to list all the files, and then you see all the results here. So in this case, these are all the files in my home directory. So there's a couple of key commands that you need to know. ls is one of them, and then the other one is pwd which is print working directory, because the shell is always set to a certain directory. In this case, I'm in the home directory, but really I want to be in my desktop and in the mosh folder, which is where I made this video. So I'm going to type CD for change directory space desktop. Now if I type PWD, I'm in my desktop folder. So you see users FDB desktop and I type CD again, mosh. Uh, and now I'm in that mosh folder. So I can type PWD to see I'm in that folder typing ls, you see that I have these files here. And it just keeps going, right? If I want to clear this, I can just type clear. That's going to remove all my um, information here. But Homebrew itself doesn't really do very much. It allows us to install other packages like FFmpeg, which is actually the tool that is mentioned here uh, in the video folder. So we're going to do that by typing brew space install space ffmpeg which is the name of the tool and again i already have this so it's going to install but i'm just going to skip here using Control c um, and once that's working what we can do is type ffmpeg and we can actually see a bunch of information about that program which we can mostly ignore now what ffmpeg does is basically converts images to our files or uh, movies from one uh, format to another format and it can extract just the audio just the video things like that so there are three steps to this. So first, we're going to convert our MP4 file, which we have, to an AVI file, which we need. Then we're going to data mosh it using this custom script, which we also install. And then we're going to use FFmpeg back again to turn it from AVI back to MP4. Right. So three steps. So the first step we can already do. FFmpeg, we type dash I to indicate the input file. And in my case, that one is called um, and I type tap here to get a completion here, Brittany circus.mp4. And then the output of that is going to be like um, circus.api. And that's all I have to do. And then I press enter. Then it's going to export these things. Now, what I see here is that it's exporting all the frames. And I don't really want all the frames. I just want a part of that video. So I'm going to do that command again. I'll type clear. I'll press the up arrow key to see the command again. Take this command. And then what I can do is I can use dash T to indicate that I only want a part of that. So dash T basically means time. So now I can say, okay, I want 0, 0, 0, 0. I want just 30 seconds of that. So 30.0 means I want 30 seconds of that uh, video instead of the whole thing. Now it's asking, do I want to overwrite? Yes. And now the file that I get is just these 30 uh, frames of the video. Note that this can't play with QuickTime. We have to use um, VLC, for example, to play it. But we're not really interested in playing it. We want to manipulate it here. So to do that, we're going to use this AV glitch uh, command. And the way that we can install this is using this command, gem install AV glitch. Um, again, I already have this, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, 
It might be that you have to add an Android command, which is sudo, which basically means you have super user rights to actually do this. Uh, and then it requires you to type in your password and then you've installed it. The problem is finding it. And I, I didn't really know a better way to find it except for doing it this way, which is the way that I've learned it, which is to use find command to actually go look for that command because it installed it, but now I can't really type um, data mosh because I can't find it this way. So what I do is, uh, if that works for you, then that's fine. But what I have to do is do find slash user slash local uh, with the name data mosh. And that's going to look in these certain directories to find the command that I have. And this one, this is the one that I'm looking for. So now I can copy this, paste it in here, press enter and see what it gives. So this is the data mosh uh, application. It takes in a file, it takes in an output and then it does its thing. So I'm going to paste this whole thing again. I'm going to give the input file, which is um, our file called circus.avi. The output is going to be circus.mosh.avi. Um, and that's all I have to do, I think. Now we press run. You see, you get these weird errors, but we don't really care about the weird errors here. And now we can convert it back. So going back here uh, to our FFmpeg uh, Stack Overflow question. So now we take FFmpeg again. We take our, as our input the circus mosh file. Again, I use tab here to autocomplete. Um, and then the output is going to be our mp4 file. Now there's one thing that's missing here, and that is to allow files to play through QuickTime, we also have to add this parameter, um, which is basically a way that the colors are in the correct format so that they work in um, QuickTime. And then we say, okay, this goes to an mp4. Remember, this is just 30 seconds. Um, so now I can see I have all these files created. I can use open and dot to open this file in the finder, and then I can go look at it. Uh, which is this file. Note that the audio is copied as well, but I won't play it here. Um, and this seems to do the trick. So there's our file.